This episode of Basics with Babbage is sponsored by Bright Cellars, a monthly wine club that matches you with fine wine you'll love and delivers it right to your door. Bright Cellars is offering you 50% off your first six bottle box plus a bonus bottle. So follow the link in the description below to take the quiz and get started. The flavor profiles of these wines are going to pair perfectly with the concept of today's episode, Advanced Grilled Cheese. Let's get down to basics. So first we must ask the essential question, what is a grilled cheese? Despite the specificity of its name, it is not necessarily grilled, but rather a sandwich that is grilled, fried, or toasted, containing cheese, bread, butter, and nothing else. Purists will tell you that if you shove anything in there like tomatoes or ham, or even condiments like mustard, you've disqualified your sandwich as a grilled cheese and in fact have made a melt. And the classic yellow American cheese and buttered white bread combo is immutably a perfect invention. So how can we do do something so bold as to even attempt to improve upon something which needs no improvement. Well, we're gonna have to focus on technique and bend the rules a little bit by introducing some interesting cheeses and flavors to the party. Let's start with some best grilled cheese best practices. You could use anything from oil to mayo to toast your bread in, but the undisputed reigning champ 10,000 years in a row is butter. Ideally, room temperature softened butter. You could melt some butter in a pan to get it on your bread if you're in a time crunch, but soft, spreadable butter like this enables you to get true edge-to-edge -edge coverage on the surface of your sandwich. Next up, cookware, the most ideal candidates for which are non-stick and cast iron. Lastly, the method. I like to start my sandwiches in a cold pan, which sort of helps the bread adhere to the cooking surface and cook more evenly. So we're going to start by plopping down our first slice of buttered bread in our cold pan, laying down our cheese or cheese mixture of choice, cranking the heat up to medium, and keeping it there until the sandwich is toasted on one side. Give it the old flipsy do and repeat until golden and toasted all over. Once complete, it's got to cool for at least like a minute before your delicate human fingers can handle it, which I like to do on a wire rack set in a rim baking sheet. This is both going to prevent the crust from getting soggy and is a great place to keep your grilled cheese warm in a low oven if you're making more than one. Then you know the rest, slice in half, use your nose to scoot your knife out of the frame like an adorable otter, kind of wiggle the two sides together and press them into each other if you want to maximize your cheese stretch, yank into two, and devour. Now a few ways that we can have some fun with this time-tested format. First up, the inside-out grilled cheese that I know most of us learn from Chef John, which calls for lightly grating cheddar over the outside of your already buttered bread. Toast and top up as normal, keeping a slightly closer eye on things because this can burn more quickly. Flip and finish on the other side, and there you have it, the only way to make a grilled cheese even more cheesy, by applying cheese to nearly every inch of its internal and external surface area. But what if we want to change up the cheese on the inside of the sandwich? The vast majority of cheeses are not great melters. The vast majority of cheeses just don't melt as well as American. If you click the link in the upper right hand corner right now, you can see how to stabilize almost any cheese into a good melting cheese, but otherwise we're going to resort to a very innovative method from America's test kitchen that involves using a food processor. This gives us the opportunity to emulsify together cheeses with lots of flavor that normally might not melt so well. Case in point, aged cheddar. Here we have seven ounces of aged white cheddar they're going to place into the food processor along with an excellent melter, two ounces of rind removed brie. We also need to up the liquid content, so we're going to add two tablespoons of dry white wine and process together for about 30 seconds to make a pan taste. Then we can optionally add half a large shallot, roughly chopped, tossing it into the food processor and pulsing just a few times until it's incorporated into the cheese mixture. And there you have it, a super flavorful cheese paste that's gonna behave a whole lot better than any of the individual cheeses would on their own. Once you've buttered your bread, you could pat this cheese mixture into a patty or just spread it straight onto the bread if it's soft enough. Toast up in the pan as usual. And like all great grilled cheeses, by the time the exterior is cooked, the interior should be gooey and melty. And when I say gooey, with this version, I really mean it. If you allow it to cool, it'll be a little less sloppy, but I love the lava-like outpour of cheese that you get from one of these straight off the griddle. And it got me thinking how else we might be able to use this technique to our advantage, and the first thing that came to mind was a jalapeno popper grilled cheese. Over here, I've got six ounces of Monterey Jack and two ounces of mild white cheddar, both excellent melters. But something that is not an excellent melter is one ounce of cream cheese, which almost kind of curdles when you heat it up. Anyway, to emulsify 
our mixture, we need a little bit of liquid. So this time, instead of wine, I'm adding two tablespoons of Mexican beer, letting that form a smooth paste, and then, instead of shallots, one large jalapeno. Roughly chopped, added to the food processor, roughly processed. And there you have it, our jalapeno popper grilled cheese cheese paste filling, which I have to admit is even delicious just on its own. This time, instead of spreading it using some gloved hands, I'm forming it into a patty, pressing everybody down a little bit, toasting as usual, flipping, scooping, and serving what I thought was an impossibility. Translating the flavors and textures of a jalapeno popper to a grilled cheese format. Like I said, this will be less sloppy if you let it wait, but I couldn't wait. And sure, I ended up getting doused in burning hot cheese, but it was worth it. This one's going on my resume right next to proficiency with Mac, Windows, and Linux. Wow, my resume says I knew Linux? I just straight up lied about that. Next up, let's try to put a twist on the inside-out grilled cheese with what I'm calling a double-decker Welsh rabbit. First, we have to make the beery, cheesy topping by sautéing one small, finely chopped shallot and two tablespoons of butter, adding one tablespoon of all-purpose flour and two teaspoons of dry mustard, whisking into an uncharacteristically mustardy roux, which we're going to use to thicken a quarter cup of dark brown ale, whisking constantly so as to not form any lumps, adding one tablespoon of wish was sheer sauce, making sure that's completely incorporated before adding 10 ounces of good yellow English cheddar. Whisk thoroughly until the cheese is fully melted and you're left with a thick, spreadable paste, which we're going to cover and keep warm until we're ready to use it. Now you can do this for almost any grilled cheese, but adding a teaspoon of mustard to about four tablespoons of butter makes mustard butter, something that's going to play real nice with this grilled cheese. I'm spreading our mustard butter on two slices of hearty sourdough, placing down and pressing in a cold cast iron pan, arranging a few slices of young cheddar on top, tearing off any overhangs and placing them in the middle. No cheese gets left behind. Toast that up as usual, maybe a little shy of where you'd normally want it, because this guy is going to be headed under the broiler. Once toasted, we are evacuating onto the usual wire rack set in a rimmed baking sheet, but we're now topping it with our Welsh rabbit mixture, which is going to take a very brief one to three minute stint under a broiler until bubbling and brown and ready to be eaten by our mouths. I'm going to cut this guy in half and garnish with some optional chopped chives. And there you have it, a truly inside out grilled cheese, the double decker Welsh rabbit. Rabbit. Rare bit. Rabbit. I don't really know how to say it. Stretch it apart, take some picks for the gram, and this guy's ready to eat with a knife and fork or with your hands if you're feeling bold. I'm sorry, do I have something in my teeth? No? Okay, thank you. Next and last, things are getting decadently French. We're going to start by caramelizing some onions. You can buy these in the store, but they are better made from scratch. However, they are time-consuming, about 30 minutes to do it properly. Basically, you want to cook them over medium-low heat and a little bit of oil until they are a deep, rich brown and have a soft, jam-like consistency. I'd be perfectly happy to just eat this with a spoon, but it's going to be even better on grilled cheese. For our cheese filling, we have 7 ounces of Comté cheese, which we're going to cube up and combine in the food processor with 2 ounces of brie, and two tablespoons of dry white wine or sherry, which we're going to do the whole process into a paste thing, about 60 seconds. Then this time our mix-in is about two tablespoons of our beautifully caramelized and cooled onion jam. Pulse that a couple times just to chop up and disperse the onions, and there you go. This time our bread of choice is going to be brioche, which despite being already very buttery, we're going to generously butter on both sides with butter. Then just like normal brie, our sandwich's rich flavor is going to be well complemented with some nice tart fruit flavors, and I think fig jam is the jam for the job. Go ahead and spread a few tablespoons of that on there before topping with a pressed patty of our cheese product. Toast this guy up as usual and make sure that you saved room for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert because this guy can handle being pretty much all three. It is gooey, rich, cheesy, fruity, funky, fresh. But that being said, brioche was a little bit too delicate for this form factor, so I think that this guy could benefit greatly from the croque monsieur treatment. That is, we're going to make a quick bechamel sauce by melting two tablespoons of butter, adding two tablespoons of flour, and cooking and whisking for about one minute until the raw flour smell dissipates, and then slowly and whisking constantly, adding about a half a cup of whole milk. Making sure to tiny whisk the mixture into a smooth paste before adding any more milk to prevent lumpage. Then all we gotta do is toast up another sandwich. Hang on a second, I'm gonna try this grilled cheese flipping method I've seen on TikTok. You flip the pan over the sandwich and oh boy, that was a bad idea to do with cast iron. Why did this need a hack? Was it that hard to flip a sandwich? Anyway, this guy's headed onto a rack set in a rim baking sheet getting topped with our bechamel and broiled. And I didn't think it was possible to make this grilled cheese any more decadent, but here we are folks, we did it. And this is definitely a grilled cheese that's going to need the fork and knife treatment, maybe even eating it off a plate like a grown-up treatment. But any and all grilled cheese could always 
use the Bright Cellars treatment. Thanks again to today's sponsor, Bright Cellars, a service that selects wine just for you from all around the world and delivers it right to your door. This service is only for adults 21 and older. The folks at Bright Cellars take pride in educating their club members, so each box comes with a wine education card for each bottle that outlines tasting notes, suggested pairings, ideal serving temperature, and origin. And you don't even have to leave the house, go to a store, and rely on your own wits to pick out a bottle that suits your taste. Bright Cellars does it all for you. All you have to do is enjoy. In this box, I received a bottle of Humdrum Chardonnay, a rich, full-bodied, fruit-forward Chardonnay that I think is going to go just perfectly with our Brie Fig Jam and Caramelized Onion Grilled Cheese. Bright Cellars is offering you 50% off your first six-bottle box plus a bonus bottle. That's seven bottles in total. Follow the link in the video description to take the quiz and get started.